Hello everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're talking about the Combat Sentinel. The spec that you can use to flex on other people for not playing Concentration and or Watchman, but has some small minor drawbacks. Brief screamers as usual. First, I'm not an expert on this spec, I'm just a nerd. I play a lot of Swole Thor, but if there's anything that I missed, if you'd leave them down in the comments below, I'm sure your fellow players would appreciate it. Secondly, the spec's in kind of a bad spot right now. It's needlessly complex and frankly doesn't do a whole lot of damage, which is kind of a bad spot to be in for a damage spec. It's kind of a labor of love. But if you're about it, let's talk about it. For our tertiary stats, accuracy, 110% every single time, you should be good to go in PvE, but in PvP, you can dump your accuracy, you don't really need it. For your tertiary stats, you can either have the dank 4.20 percentile accuracy, and you should be ready to rock and roll, or you can go for 12.40 percentile accuracy if you have the gear for it. If you don't have enough for that 12.4 gear though, just settle for the 420, you should be fine. Finally, throw everything else into crit, and you should be ready to rock and roll. For our Legendaries, or tactical. We take Malevolence, it turns our Lance into an extra dot. It's pretty darn nice. If you are doing ranked PvP, you should have to fell Splice Change. Otherwise, just take Malevolence, it's just kind of the best. Dispatch is going to help out with our focus management here. It's pretty darn nice, especially for a class that says focus demanding as, the, as combat is. Um, additionally, every time you use a Twin Saber Throw, it's going to make your next Dispatch critically hit. It's pretty darn nice. Next, we have Fearless Victor, which is going to give us a flat 10% melee damage. It's free damage. We love to see it. For our ability tree, Zen Lance is going to make our Lance do extra crit chance, which is very nice. Additionally, if you use Lance when you're under Zen, you get another Lance. It's pretty nice. Transcendence is just the best. Its movement speed is pretty fantastic. Valor Blade is going to increase the critical chance of our Blade Rush. Swift is going to be free crit chance all the time. It's pretty fantastic. Defensive Roll is great for PvE, for surviving AoE damage, or you can take Intercessor in PvP for the extra leap. All these options available up here, Zealous Ward is what I usually default to for the healing and the CC immunity under Saber Ward. Adjudicator is great in PvE for fluffing with your rebuke, and Trailblazer is great for farming AoE damage. Likewise, Guarded by the Force, Force Stasis, and Blade Blitz are all viable. I personally go with Guarded by the Force, but Stasis if you want the CC, or Blade Blitz if you want the mobility. And finally, Inspired Focus gives you like a flat 2.5k healing per second. Not great, not terrible, but the roll options are kind of uh, boring. So, Inspired Focus is what we roll with. Now, let's talk about actually doing damage. We have two... Hmm, energy resource system management here. The first is going to be our focus. Focus are these little yellow bubbles underneath your player health bar right here. This is what we're going to be using to generate focus with low damaging abilities and then spending that focus on high damaging abilities. So we want to be generating our focus to make sure that we have enough focus to spend on our you know big burst damage. You have a couple of different ways to be generating focus here. The first is our Force Leap. Force Leap is our leap, obviously. It gets you close to the target, and especially as a melee, that's kind of important for us because, you know, we don't have that much range here, so having Force Leap is very, very nice. The second way to generate uh, for focus is with our Zealous Strike. Zealous Strike generates six focus boom, right away. Uh, that's a lot of focus. That's a lot of focus very quickly. We want to be smashing that pretty much as often as possible. It has a relatively short cooldown, so we want to be just smashing Zealous Strike over and over and over again. It also applies this little beat down debuff, so it's going to make you do more damage. It's pretty darn nice. Finally, we have our regular old Strike. Now, Strike is kind of boring, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't do that much damage. It does generate two focus, though. Uh, it, it's not great, not terrible, but it's a free way to be spamming if you need extra focus and you don't have your Zealous Strike. You can always default back to a regular strike. So, one more time for the road. That's for Sleep, Zealous Strike, and Strike are your three ways to spend your focus. I'm sorry, to generate your focus. Now, you're going to be noticed here that we, when we spend our focus, we're going to slowly be building these stacks of centering. Centering is our second resource we have to be managing. Whenever you spend your focus, you will slowly build up to 30 stacks of centering. And once you hit 30 stacks, your Zen is going to start to glow. Now, when your Zen glows and you convert your Zen, you, you hit the Zen button, you will get 30% alacrity. So everything is gonna go faster, which is pretty darn nice. Additionally, 
you get an extra stack of precision. We'll talk about that in a hot second. And additionally, some of your abilities are gonna cost less focus to use. It's essentially a, a turbocharger for all of our abilities here. We wanna be hitting it pretty much as often as possible. We'll talk about where that falls in the rotation later. But just know that when you build your stacks of centering, when you hit 30, you get Zen, and then you get these six stacks, six stacks of Zen. You can see here, you start attacking just a little bit faster because of our glorious stacks of Zen. Those are our two resources. Force, or I'm sorry, focus management with Leap, Zealous Strike, and Strike, and then spending all of that centering on Zen. Now, let's talk about actually hitting the target here. The entire spec of combat revolves around a Taru form. A Taru form essentially says, hey, anytime you hit the target, you have a small percent chance to generate an additional attack, which is just free extra like four to 6K damage. Not great, not terrible, but it's free damage. We love to see it. Additionally, triggering a Taru form strike will make things happen throughout our rotation. It's gonna make you give, it's gonna give you some procs. Um, but I don't want to just rely on RNG, which is why our favorite ability in combat is going to be Blade Rush. Blade Rush, I'll be honest, does not do a whole lot of damage. You know, it hits the target a couple times. Not great. Not terrible. However, it will automatically trigger an Ataru form strike, which is pretty darn fantastic. This essentially makes Blade Rush our primary single target ability here. Anytime you don't know what you should be hitting or if you are uh, just spamming buttons, definitely come back here and hit the Blade Rush. Sorry, Duke is barking. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So yes, uh, Blade Rush is kind of your default filler ability. If you don't know what else you should be hitting, just hit Blade Rush. You'll cause other things to proc. It's it's If you see a combat sentinel, there's a high likelihood that they're currently pressing Blade Rush because it's just the ultimate filler ability. But you're going to notice here, as we're triggering these Ataru form strikes, a couple of things are happening. Our Dispatch and our Clashing Blast are now both glowing. That's because of this little buff right here, Handed Justice. Every time you trigger an Ataru form strike, which we can trigger through our Blade Rush, our Dispatch will now be usable on any target for free. Uh, that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. It's a lot of damage. Additionally, because of our legendary of Dispatcher, we will get a crit every time we use our Twin Saber Throw. So what we can do is we can use ten, Twin Saber Throw, and now our Dispatch will be an auto crit we can use for free and do a fair bit of damage to the target. It's pretty darn nice if you ask me. It's one of our three primary damaging abilities. So. Just remember, anytime you hit the target with an Ataru Form Strike, Dispatch will become available, which you can then use on the target for free. It's nice. Additionally, though, our Clashing Blast is going to start to glow as well. This means that Clashing Blast is going to crit and do more damage every time you get an Ataru Form Strike. So if you see it glowing, it's going to crit. That's really all there is. Boop, does a whole bunch of damage. It's pretty darn nice. And it's all made possible because we're triggering these Ataru form strikes by using Blade Rush over and over and over and over again. So one of the main reasons that we spam Blade Rush so much is that we can get these extra procs of these extra abilities. So that means our Dispatch and our Clashing Blast are going to be procced by our Ataru form strike. But there is one final high damaging ability here that we haven't talked about yet, and that is Lance. Now Lance does like an okay amount of damage, does like 22k damage, you know, hit the target, pretty nice. However, it also sunders the target, so it has, you know, less armor, which is pretty darn nice. And finally, it has bloody focus thanks to and 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 malevolence. It's gonna have an extra bleed on it. So essentially, anytime you hit go, you hit your lance button here, it's gonna have this little extra bleed and do a whole bunch of extra damage. It's pretty darn nice. It is our third primary damaging ability. Now, if you remember before, we talked about down here in our tree, how Zen Lance means that anytime you have Zen and you use Lance, you can actually just keep hitting Lance. So if I hit Zen right now and hit the Lance button, you're gonna see it's not going on cooldown. That means you can just kind of hit Zen and then Lance and then Lance and then Lance and then Lance as often as you like. Uh, it's pretty darn nice. Now you don't have to spend, actually you probably shouldn't spend everything of Zen into Lance. However, you can totally meme around with it. It's it's fine, totally free to do. Just remember that little interaction of anytime you have Zen up, Lance will go not on cooldown. It's pretty fantastic. 
Additionally, Lance is a hinder, which means that you will not be able to use your high mobility actions. So like Sorks can't bubble, or you can't rock it out, or you can't use force mobility. It's a great way to kind of trap people in place. It's only for like a second and a half, so you know, do with that as you see fit, but it's an easy way to kind of lock someone down for a quick GCD. It's pretty nice. So those are our three primary damaging abilities here. Again, that is Dispatch after a Twin Saber Throw. Crit, boop, does a bunch of damage. Classing Blast, boop, does a whole bunch of damage. And then Lance, boop, does a whole bunch of damage. These are the three abilities that we want to be using under our burst windows. But how do you start a burst window? Well, I'm glad you asked me. This leads us to our kind of final ability here called Precision. What Precision does is it gives you this little buff right here of two sabers crossed. And what that means is that the next two high damaging abilities you use will have 100% armor penetration, which means that their damage is gonna go up rather considerably. So what the, can that mean? Well, if we take a look at these two, like Dispatch and Clash and Bash do like 30K before, but under Precision, they now do like, oh, 50K. Oh, 50K. Oh, that's a lot of damage. This is the setup for our entire burst window. Okay, so anytime you use precision, you basically only want to use these ability or precision stacks on dispatch, clashing blast, and lance because they do a whole bunch of extra damage. It's pretty darn nice. Now, we do have to talk about another interaction here. I know we're talking about a lot of interactions. I, I promise it, it does get easier to understand. The, the final interaction here that we re really need to discuss is that if you use Zen and you have, and then you use precision afterwards, you'll get three stacks of precision. So before you only get two stacks of precision, see here, only two stacks, it's kind of sad, we can use it on dispatch and then our clash and blast. However, if I have my stacks of precision up, if I go Zen and then my precision, I will get three stacks of precision. So now I can go like Lance, oh, hello. No, I won't, Never mind. Lance, and then Clashing Blast, and then one final stack of Precision afterwards, hopefully for a Dispatch. These are the two ways you can generate your big burst damage windows. We have essentially the major burst damage window of using it under Zen, and then we have the minor burst damage window of not using Zen and just using a regular Precision. So let's, let's back that up very quickly to make sure that we're all on the same page, okay? so. Build force or build focus with force sleep, zealous strike and strike. Anytime you use damaging abilities, you're gonna go into building extra stacks of centering. Blade rush triggers the tower form strikes, which makes your dispatch and your clash and blast glow. They do more damage. Twin saber throw makes your dispatch crit. It's pretty darn nice. Precision gives you extra damage on our high damaging abilities, which means that we can do a whole bunch of extra damage with them. And finally, if you use your Zen and then use your Precision, you will get three stacks of Precision instead of just two. So you can do something, you know, radically crazy like Zen, Precision, Big Dispatch, Big Clashing Slash, and then Big Lance and hit someone for like 150K in less than three cooldowns. That's a lot of damage, okay? It's a lot of damage. There is one other ability here that we should probably mention that is Blade Barrage. Blade Barrage, frankly, does not do a whole bunch of damage. However, because of this little puppy right here, Dispatchers, it has a chance to generate one focus. It does not consume any, any focus, which is nice. It helps you float a little bit, does a fair bit of damage. And with that extra chance to generate a little bit of focus here, it's a nice little filler ability, okay? That's kind of all I need to know about Blade Barrage. Now, if you want to memorize a rotation to do a whole bunch of damage, I recommend you play Concentration. It just does more damage. The rotation's more straightforward. It's easier to learn. It's just kind of better. However, if you want to learn combat, let's talk about the dummy way to play combat, and then we can talk about the full rotation. All right? The dummy way to play combat is essentially we're going to set up a major berserk precision window for a massive burst. We're going to fill and we're going to have a minor precision window. All right. So the big Zen precision restack window. Great. Fantastic. You're going to fill for a little bit. They're going to have a minor precision window. 
of your two less damaging abilities. And then you're going to fill back up to 30 stacks of centering and then just repeat, repeat, repeat. So that might look something like this. If we leap in, we build a whole bunch of centering. Great, great, great. We have our focus ready to rock and roll. You go Zen, Precision, Dispatch, Clashing Blast, Lance. And now you fill for a little bit here, making sure you're ready to rock and roll for your next minor. And then you go Precision, Lance, Clashing Blast. And now your job is to fill all the way back up to 30 stacks of centering here. You're gonna fill with Blade Rush, you're gonna fill with Zen Strike, you're gonna fill with Blade Barrage, and you're gonna fill with Regular Strike until you get back up to 30 stacks of centering, and then you begin again with the big Zen, Precision, Dispatch, Clashing Blast, Lance, and then you fill, 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 and then Precision, Lance, Clash, and then fill, fill, fill. Now this isn't the precise way to do it. There is a more efficient way to be building out this rotation, but if you don't wanna bother sitting down here and memorizing the full, you know, 19, 20 button rotation over and over and over again, uh, you can totally play this way and it's completely fine of just major, major Zen precision window, minor Zen precision window, and then fill back up to the top and then just repeat, repeat, repeat. Totally up to you. Again, just one more time for the road here. If you get up to 30 stacks of centering, you go Zen, Precision, Dispatch, Clash, Lance. Then you fill and fill and fill and fill. And then Precision, Lance, Clash. And then you just fill and fill and fill. That is kind of the dummy way to play a spec, especially if you're in like PVP, you don't wanna be following a rotation. Just try to be lining up these massive burst windows using precision and you should be fine, frankly. But if you wanna sit down and hard memorize the full rotation, here's exactly how it's supposed to look, all right? So we're gonna have our 30 stacks of centering, which we can build by using a regen. I didn't mention that before. If you use a regen, you'll build 30 stacks of centering. It's pretty nice. The opening would look something like this. We're going to leap in, and then we're gonna immediately use Zen, and then Blade Rush to trigger the Atara form, Zealous Strike and Saber Throw to prepare us for the rest of the rotation, and then our major burst window of Precision, Dispatch, Clash, Lance, and then we fill with Blade Rush, Strike, Blade Rush, Zealous Strike, and then our minor burst window of Precision, Lance, Clash, and then Fill with Blade Rush, Blade Barrage, Blade Rush, Blade Rush, begin again. So Zen, Blade Rush, Zealous, Saber, to make sure we're all lined up. Then Major Burst Window, Major Burst Window. Then fill with Blade, Strike, Blade, Zealous, and to our Minor Burst Window. And then fill with Blade, Blade Barrage, Blade Rush, Blade Rush begin again. So it's kind of opening up with setting everything up with Zen, Blade Rush, Zealous Strike, to a Saber Throw into our major burst window of a high damaging abilities, into filling and making sure we have our focus for the rest of the rotation by going Blade Rush, Strike, Blade Rush, Zealous Strike into our minor burst window, and then fill with Blade Rush, Blade Barrage, Blade Rush, Blade Rush, and then just repeat over and over and over again until your fingers bleed. This is, you know, there's a lot going on in this rotation. Sometimes things will get messed up, like sometimes your dispatch will not come off a cooldown for some whatever reason, and you're gonna have to fill with Blade Rush. That's fine, that's fine. You can always fill with a Blade Rush if things aren't going the way you want them to. You can always just Blade Rush your way back to 30 stacks of centering, and then just kind of reset from there. It's not like an ideal solution. However, if you have to reset, that's totally fine. Just spam your way through Blade Rush and Zealous Strikes until you're back at the beginning, and then you should be ready to rock and roll. Again, just one more time here as we'll go through the entire rotation. We'll build up to 30 real quick. Centering, Blade Rush, Zealous Strike, Twin Saber Throw, set everything up, then Precision, Dispatch, Clash, Lance, and now, Fill her up with Blade Rush, Strike, Blade Rush, Zealous Strike into our minor precision window of precision, Lance, Clash, and then Blade Rush, 
barrage, blade rush, blade rush. So it's setting it up, major burst window, maintaining your focus, minor burst window, and then filling to 30. Just repeat that over and over and over again, and you should be ready to rock and roll with the Combat Sentinel. Couple other things to note here in terms of defensive cooldowns. Your primary defensive cooldown is going to be your Saber Ward. Saber Ward kind of decreases the damage that you take a little bit by giving you some ranged defense and absorbing 25% of the damage that you take. Not great, not terrible, has a rather long cooldown. It kind of is what it is. Our next defensive cooldown is gonna be our Rebuke. Rebuke reduces all damage taken by 20%. And additionally, anytime you take damage, it'll actually reflect like 3k damage back to the attacker. So if you get a dot on you, this is a great way to fluff. Additionally, it will last up to 30 seconds because it refreshes every time you take damage. So you can have this up to you for up to 30 seconds. It's pretty darn nice. Additionally, I take Guarded by the Force for the extra 99% damage reduction. It's kind of a great cooldown if you ask me, but if you want to take the CC instead, totally viable. We also have our Stealth Out through Force Camouflage. This is going to reduce our threat, which is, you know, nice for your tanks if you want to. Additionally, it's a mini stealth. It's not the full stealth that you get on like a shadow. However, it will make you invisible to other players, which is nice. So it's a great way to get out of combat in PvP. And then finally, we have our Transcendence here, which is going to make everyone go fast, which is, you know, pretty nice. Everyone likes to go fast. Who doesn't like to go fast? I do. I know I do. One final mechanic here to talk about, it is Valorous Call and Inspiration. Now, Valorous Call is going to instantly give you 30 stacks of centering. So if you're in combat and for some reason you forgot to like build your 30 stacks of centering beforehand, you can totally use your Valorous Call that way. And then finally, we have our Inspiration, which is going to give you 30 stacks of centering. It's, I'm sorry, it's going to consume 30 stacks of centering and give your entire raid team extra 10% damage, just flat out. So what a lot of people do is that they'll jump in and they'll be using their centering normally. However, they will then use their Valorous Call to build up to their inspiration. So it might look something like this. If, if you're jumping in, you start your rotation. All right, start rotation, start rotation. Everything is lined up. People use their Zen and then they use their Valorous Call, inspiration, and then they go into their rotation and they start hitting the target. And that way they're not wasting all those stacks of, you know, centering, etc. It's much easier to uh, to proc that inspiration without completely ruining your rotation by making sure that, you know, you're kind of good to go by using Valorous Call into Inspiration so that way you don't have to worry about destroying all of your Zen. It's pretty nice. I think that's all that I have for combat. It's kind of straightforward. Just set up the big burst damage windows, use your big damaging abilities on the target, and you should be ready to rock and roll. If you have any questions about this spec, by all means, you know, hit me up. I don't think I'm that unavailable. I hope I'm not at least. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about that. Uh, any questions, comments, complaints, concerns, conundrums, etc., leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to get back to them as soon as humanly possible. Um, but I think that's all that I have. I hope you guys have a grand old day and enjoy yourselves. If you want to play combat, by all means, screw the haters, all right? They can't tell you how to live your life. Only your mother can do that. But at the mean, in, in the same vein, you know, like, comment, and subscribe, or don't. Again, I can't tell you how to live your life. But your mom would want me to, to subscribe. Okay? She would. We're good friends. Okay. Duke doesn't agree.